Hey VIPs, it's Lexis Joy from Lexis Joy VIP Access, and I have the absolute greatest honor of interviewing the one and only genius himself, Mark Mangini, sound designer. It's a pleasure to be here. <laughs> it's such a pleasure, again, an honor interviewing you, and I just want to congratulate you on all the phenomenal and outstanding success with your career. How do I respond to that? It's, like, <laughs> I, I, it's an honor for me. I, I just love what I do, and that's... Maybe that's why I, maybe I'm so good at what I do is Definitely. because I love what I do. And we love watching all of your projects, yes. but and listening and yes. listening. Very and important. It's about first, sound. Mm -hmm. And first off, can you tell us what inspired you to work on the sound aspect in film? It really started with Star Wars. Um, my first job in movies was at a cartoon studio, Hanna Barbera. Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard of it? They're the ones that make like Scooby Doo yes. and the Flintstones and those kinds of cartoons. And I was, I was a beginner, like an apprentice sound person, but it, it was just a job. I, mm -hmm. I was thrilled to have it. But I saw Star Wars in 1977 or 1976, and when I heard how you could create. A universe you could create a reality with sound that you could you know from things that don't exist like Wookiees and and Millennium Falcons mm -hmm. and things like that I thought that's what I want to do it I mean it just really inspired me and in, to want to do bigger and better things and work on big movies for studios and I wanted to do a you know a space epic like Star Wars and, and I was very lucky my I think it was my second movie was Star Trek the very first wow. Star Trek movie and I've worked on four of them Oh my goodness, that is incredible and so inspiring just hearing your answer. Now, you are the governor of the sound branch for the Academy of yeah. Motion Pictures, Arts and Sciences. So what is a typical day like in the life of a genius like you at work? <laughs> <laughs> well, we kind of got to split that up into two answers because I am indeed a governor of the Academy of Motion Picture, Arts and Sciences, and that has one specific set of duties. And then I am a sound designer for work. That's what I do nine to five every day of the week. But um, as a governor, my job is, it's a mix of hard work and fun, really. The, the fun part is that I get to help design the Oscar show, and I, we, I get to be part of choosing who the hosts are and who the celebrities are and all the interesting things you're going to see during the telecast. So I get, I get to know way before everybody else, yeah. way before <laughs> you guys see it on January or February, whatever that date is. Um, I, I know what we're going to do and all the cool you know special awards we're going to give out. Um, also, being a governor means being an ambassador for cinema. And I, 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 let's just say that means I get to travel around the world and talk about the importance of cinema and why cinema is important to everyone culturally, not just mm -hmm. Americans, mm -hmm. but people from around the world. So, for example, I was just in Goa, India, mm -hmm. speaking at the International Film Festival on sound design, which is what I do. And I got to speak to students, filmmakers, lovers of cinema, mm -hmm. just audience members, and tell them, here's why sound is important, and here's w ways that sound can actually enhance your enjoyment yeah. of the movies. So that's, and, and also too, you know, the Academy itself, the AMPAS, Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences, we do a lot of great public works. Mm -hmm. We restore old films that are starting to crumble and destroy in vaults around the world. We bring them back to life so you can enjoy them and learn more about your own history, American and European and Asian history. Um, we have lots of uh, grant programs to encourage students to pursue filmmaking careers. We have fellowship programs to teach people how to be better writers, directors, producers, actors. In other words, we're an organization that, of people that love movies, that supports peop other people like that that want to mm -hmm. be a part of the movie business. Then there's my real job. <laughs> I don't get paid to do that. I mean, the, you know, being a governor means Anne and I, my wife, get to dress up in tuxedos Aww. and fancy gowns <laughs> and go to beautiful ceremonies and, you know, uh, meet celebrities and, mm -hmm. and talk to filmmakers from around the world. And that's it's hard work, but I guess that's something I have Enjoyable. to I have to do. You know, <laughs> going to lots of uh, black tie events mm -hmm. is really fun. And then there's my day job, which is making sounds for movies, and that you know on a daily basis is 
I'm out in the world with a sound recorder and a microphone capturing the sounds of my environment and my world. And I'll put, as, as, as Anne could tell you, my wife, I record everything. I mean, I just, I oh, keep wow. a, a huge library, one of the largest libraries in the world of real sounds. And you can even see in behind, yeah. if you can actually see this, <laughs> on the right, that's a, a page from my sound library. And it's, it's like a book catalog in a, in a real library. If you want to look up if you, we'll do this later. Name any sound you can think of, and I've got hundreds of versions of those sounds. So I, during my typical day, I record sounds, I bring them into this studio, and I edit them and make them match the, the movie that's been already shot, or I create sounds. So, you know, in a movie like Mad Max, there's lots of things that don't exist. Or, or a movie, Star Trek is maybe an even more obvious example. There's... Uh, spaceships and weaponry like photon torpedoes and phasers and things like that and creatures none of them really exist so I have to create the sounds for them from scratch and convince you the audience that these sounds are real that what you, because what's on the screen is fake mm -hmm. right that's a special effect it's a CGI or co computer generated image mm -hmm. so I have to make something that's really fake visually come off as authentic and the way we do that is with sound. Wow, that is so terrific. So I hope everyone is thinking about the sound that they want to see a different version <laughs> of here. And imagine, guys, if movies, your favorite movie did not have any sound. So sound contributes so much to the movie, and we should all thank Mark for it. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm not the only one. Yeah. I'd like to think I'm the only one that does great sound, but there's lots of really talented practitioners that called sound designers that do exactly what mm. I do. And hopefully every year those people win Academy Awards. You'll see in this year's Oscar ceremony, there will be an Oscar for best sound editing and best sound mixing. The sound editing award is what I do. I take create sounds mm. and then I bring them to someone who has to blend them together to make the single soundtrack that you hear in the theater when you go to see a movie. Amazing. Now, you were just recently awarded the Australian Academy Award for Sound, so congrats on thank that. You, you, How does you. it feel for you being honored for your outstanding work and also what was your reaction like when you found out? How can you not how can anyone not be thrilled when they're honored for an award? It, it's it's thrilling and it's humbling, quite honestly, to uh, it, I, I suppose one of the great joys in life is when you invest everything of, of yourself into what you do, which is what I do. I mean, I live and breathe sound f as my life as much as I do my own family. <laughs> and so then to be recognized by the rest of the world, to acknowledge that and say, you did a really good job. Mm -hmm. Isn't that the best feeling in the world when somebody really? pats you on the back yes. and says, nice <laughs> job, you did a really great interview. Mm -hmm. I did a great sound job. And so it's, it's the most satisfying feeling in the world when you get recognized. And I get a beautiful trophy to put on my, my shelf in my home. So And that really great, great quote that when you love what you do, you're basically like not working anymore. So yeah. the way that you love your work too, we see it in yeah. all of your projects. You know, my, that's one of the things I remember very distinctly growing up. Um, I grew up in a large Italian family in Boston and my dad used to say at dinner all the time, find something you love to do every day and make that your career because it will it will disappear mm -hmm. you'll be have he said that's the secret to happiness was doing something you love every day like i, I imagine you always yeah. you seem to really enjoy doing <laughs> this so you're doing the right thing thank <laughs> you so much now you also delivered the keynote address at the 2015 sound on film conference so for those who are not there what message would you like to highlight from the event and bring out to the public can i highlight two messages yes, <laughs> I, actually, I had several messages but two of the key points were um, artistry and bravery the, mm -hmm. these are two topics that are really important to me the first is that um, what we do in cinema whether you're a sound designer or you're a cinematographer or you're an actor you're an artist now, most people would say it's easy to imagine the actor as an artist. We, we see the struggles they go through and the internal mm -hmm. turmoil and how they find a character and they, 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 they deliver that character in front of the camera. But very few people are aware of the artistic contribution that sound designers, cinematographers, costumers make. They, we're seen as maybe 
technical mm -hmm. kinds of work. But in fact, in sound, we, we're just telling stories, just like a writer does, just like an actor does, just the way the actor delivers the lines they tell a story. We can do those same things with sound. And so that was my message is I wanted everyone who loves sound and is interested in sound to feel like an artist and use those impulses to make their work better. To do that, you have to be brave. Mm -hmm. And you know this, you have to meet somebody new every yeah. day and interview them and <laughs> have fun and make it feel casual and normal. But I'm sure you always have a little bit of yeah, butterflies of beforehand, right? <laughs> every artist has those butterflies before they give to the world whatever their work is. And so I do too. When I'm ready to present sound to my director, I'm, I can't sleep the night mm -hmm. before. Wow. And I, I get anxious and I think, well, maybe I shouldn't do that. Maybe that's a little too mm -hmm. risky. But no, that's the secret to being an artist is bravery. Is that's, that's how you create, is by giving of yourself to the world. That's what artists do. And so I tried to encourage everyone in that audience, be brave, take risks. Art doesn't happen without taking risks. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I've told Rio this, my son, many times, that mm -hmm. bravery is important, and the, th there's the thing that separates people, brave people, from not brave people is something very simple and fundamental. Brave people are afraid, too. The mm -hmm. difference is brave people overcome the anxiety and do the right thing yeah. anyway. We're just, brave people are just like anybody else. Same with artists, but they find a way to overcome bravery, I mean, overcome anxiety and take risk. That is so inspiring. And I know that everyone watching right now is inspired by everything that you have to say. <laughs> I, hope, I hope, I hope, Now, you started working with sound in film since the 1970s, as you mentioned. So how do you feel the field has evolved since then? It's just gotten better mm -hmm. and better and more interesting, you know, I'm sure you see when you go to the cinema, yeah. you see the advertisements for Dolby Sound and Atmos and, and all the new sort of what they call immersive sound systems. We now have this palette, if you will, the ability to play sound in a cinema in ways that feel incredibly believable. So in the 40 years, I've been doing this for 40 years, that... Um, Th that I've seen from the beginning of my career to today, we just get given better and better tools to reproduce sound in a cinema so that you feel like what you're hearing is real, so that what you're seeing is as, as real as what you're hearing. And that's our constant goal, is to try to make it feel like you're in the real world. Because remember, a movie is fake. Mm -hmm. Everything about yeah. them, but our job, and this is what we call in industry jargon, suspension of disbelief. Mm -hmm. Our job is to get you into a dark room and make you think what you're seeing and hearing is actually real. We want you to suspend your disbelief that that's not really real and make you think it's real. Yeah. And that's my job every day. So the best part of my job over the last 40 years has been I have these better and better tools to work with mm -hmm. to make it feel like or sound like oh my God, that sounded like that was just right next yeah. to me, or that explosion rocked the theater, mm -hmm. and I, I, that felt like a, the real thing. So that, that's been, that's been wo a wonderful advancement for me. And that's incredible. Again, we love watching and hearing all the differences from films back then and now as well. So what do you hope to see happen in the future with sound in film? A, a continuation of that process, actually, is eventually, uh, my hope is that visually and sonically, Movies will get to the point where you'll walk into a cinema and you'll just be immersed. You'll literally feel like you walked into another reality. Kind of like, I guess, um, what's that new, you know, you wear those goggles oh, and yeah. that everybody's mm -hmm. getting excited about virtual reality. Yeah. It's going to really turn into that where you just, you don't even know. You just, you feel like you're in a dream state. Yeah. It's so real. You, you, you have to pinch yourself maybe uh, to believe it. That is remarkable. Now, you always have so much that you're working on. So what upcoming projects are you working on that everyone can look forward to? I have three really interesting ones. I just finished an amazing 
uh, spy thriller called The Accountant with Ben Affleck and Anna Kendrick and J.K. Simmons, who won the Oscar last year for Whiplash, and Ben Affleck, everybody knows, Mm -hmm. incredibly talented. It's an amazing spy thriller. Just finished that. That doesn't come out till next October. Wait for it. It will be so worth it. We've shown it to early audience, test audiences, and we're getting amazing response to this movie. So wait till October. It will be talked about for Oscar season mm-hmm. next year. Um, then I'm going to do a documentary about a, an internationally known sports figure. Um, I can't tell you who, but we're following this person. Sue, so I'll be able to announce this. Maybe you'll do a follow-up interview yes, at some definitely. point. Um, I'll be ab- I'll be able to announce this fairly soon, but it's a really exciting opportunity to do sort of a state-of-the-art documentary. Sound normally is not really handled in mm-hmm. a big sort of movie way in documentaries. They kind of just put a microphone and whatever they get. So this particular athlete loves sound and brought me on and said, I want this to be the world's best sounding documentary. So stay tuned for that. That's going to be really exciting. And then I'm doing a museum project. It it will tour around many of the, the big museums in the United States and Europe. And we're presenting a unique look at the world's dying languages, Mm -hmm. and there's thousands of them. It's a little esoteric, but it's a chance to do something kind of different and work in a museum environment, not in a movie theater. So I like to try different things just to keep my creative juices flowing. So I just finished working this year on um, Black Mass uh, with Johnny Depp and Joel Edgerton, a a really, really interesting movie about this very famous gangster in Boston and and, um, uh, powerful, interesting crime drama. And then um, just before that, I just finished um, Mad Max Fury Road, which I I could not be more proud of. It's truly one of the greatest accomplishments, I think, in my career because it allowed me to do so much with sound. That that movie is all about sound. In fact, the, the director said to me during the making of it, Mark, Mad Max is a movie we see Mm-hmm. with our ears yes. because wow. the ears what the sound that we've created really helped tell that story in a, in, in a very powerful and dramatic way and and that director George Miller who was an amazing man amazingly uh, bright and creative man uh, was a very generous filmmaker who really t- said Mark go do whatever you want to do just just make this movie sound great and big and powerful and and uh, tell my story with sound and and I, you know, I, I think we have a real opportunity with this film to be recognized for some awards, you know, maybe in a month or so, where we're all crossing our fingers. <laughs> yeah. That is spectacular, and we all just got extra excited for all of your upcoming projects because everything you work on is truly a masterpiece. Wow, <laughs> hold on, hold on, we lost our background. There oh, we there we there go. We go. <laughs> Asli, if you could bring out one message to all your fans and admirers of your work, what message would that be? Go to the movie theater. Yes. <laughs> I I genuinely believe that that's the best kind of entertainment experience you can have. I love dev- our devices. Mm-hmm. I love iPhones and I love iPads and other kinds of devices. But you can't get the sight and sound experience that you can get in a cinema. And, you know, there's there's this interesting sort of historical aspect to it, you know, for hundreds of thousands of years humankind has been gathering around a flickering light to tell stories. Mm -hmm. Even as cave men or cave women or cave people, (laughs) um, we've been telling stories to our families and our our, our societies, um, our groups, around a a flickering fire. Now we do it around a flickering projector in a dark room. And that's how we pass down stories. That's how we learn. That's how we grow in that social environment. I think I don't know about anybody else, but to me, there's no greater feeling than going to a cinema and seeing a great comedy and laughing with 500 other people, yeah, or definitely. being frightened, you know, in a in a great horror film, you know, when the the thing jumps out from <laughs> behind the whatever it is. I, I love that communal experience of sharing it with a group of people. So I say, go to the movies. It's the just the best way to enjoy entertainment.
Yeah, it's such an outstanding message. And as you said, you're sharing it with other people. So it's not only an entertainment experience, it's also a learning experience where you get to learn about the sound in the film and actually hear it as well. So Indeed. that's yeah. excellent. Now, thank you so, so oh, very so much, much for pleasure. speaking with me today. Yeah. Again, it's an absolute and incredible honor. And everyone will just have to stay tuned for your spectacular projects. Please, please <laughs> do. Go to the movies. Go to Yay. the movies. It's really great there. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank and that's you. it for Thank VIP you. Exclusive. Bye guys. Bye guys. I've had the good uh, fortune to be creating the sound for the MGM Lion logo. The, the logo you see at the beginning of the movies, you know, it comes up and the lion roars. So I uh, had the um, opportunity to re actually record sounds for this. MGM hired me to create like the new mm -hmm. high fidelity digital version of the MGM Lion Roar. So here's the sounds I recorded. I went actually of all places to South Korea to record tiger sounds. Uh, See if you recognize yeah, Leo exclusive. the This is this is a, this is secret Hollywood stuff. We use tiger roars because mm -hmm. they sound more ferocious than actual lion roars. Wow. So here's the sounds that I recorded <laughs> while I was Pretty terrifying. Here's another. Here's a. Here's a big loud one. Oh come on. Oh wow. Yeah. It's and I'm like a foot away from this tiger. I'm oh. separated by two inch thick bars, but he's there and I'm here and he's like lunging at me and I've got a microphone. Oh. <laughs> oh, I'm oh getting the God. best sound in the world, but I'm scared out of my pants. Oh my goodness. <laughs> awesome. So th that's kind of the beginnings of you go out into the world and record sounds. And then I take these and I edit them together, just like you edit your interviews. So cool. And I edit them to match the mouth movement of the logo that you see in the movie theaters. Wow, so that's a VIP access exclusive yeah. for everyone. Tell your friends. <laughs>